I have the pleasure and the honor of bringing up, man, I consider this guy not only my coach, but a brother. He is an individual World Poetry Slam champion. <laughs> an underground Poetry Slam champion. <laughs> a Slam team coach and champion. <laughs> and he is the author of a very well-selling book, Helium. <laughs> and he was just on Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> from right here in San Diego. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Rudy, I feel like this is the best intro you've ever had. Y'all make some noise and show your love for Rudy Francisco. <laughs> are we ready, San Diego? Are we ready? All right. First poem is a warm-up poem, it's a short poem. It's called A Few Things I Strongly Believe. If you believe in these things, you can nod your head, you can snap your fingers. If you don't believe in these things, um, I suppose you can not do anything. So here we go. <laughs> a few things I strongly believe. I believe that sour apple flavored anything is delicious. Y'all don't like sour apple? No. <laughs> Fuck. I believe, uh, I believe that orange juice tastes better with pulp. Um, I believe that Cinnabon is made by angels. Yeah. Um, see, I like Arizona iced tea, right? But I also believe that 24 ounces of anything for a dollar might actually be poison. For real. Um, I, believe, I believe that masculinity is a wet fish that most men are just trying to hold on to. Um, and, and smiling before a fight is the quickest way to make your opponent nervous. <laughs> I, believe, I believe that music is easier to digest than medicine. I believe a good song can turn any room into a church. I believe that Whitney Houston's voice is all the proof I need to know God exists. That's the end. That's the end. You can clap. It's over. It's over. <laughs> All right, so this next poem is another, it's a, it's a real short poem, right? So, I, I, don't, I don't kill bugs, right? And um, so, because I'm just like, look, man, just do you, I'm gonna do me, let's not. Um, so, so I wrote this poem, right, about not killing bugs, and I posted it, and like this, uh, this naturist blog had like reblogged it, right? And um, a lot of people commented, they were like, oh my God, I love this poem. Mostly white people, right? Which is fine. Um, like I don't have an issue with that, right? But um, a woman, uh, a black woman, she commented on it, and she was like, what's really awesome is that this poem is about blackness, but it's so subtle, right? And then, so the white people saw that comment. And then they commented on that comment. And then they were like, not everything's about being black. You know some, you know, some, of, some of y'all get it. Um, so, uh, so I had to respond. I was like, you know what, um, actually, it is about being black, um, <laughs> but you can still like it, right? That's fine. Um, so here we go, poem, short poem. So she asks me to kill the spider. All right. Instead, I get the most peaceful weapons I could find. I take a cup and a napkin, I catch the spider, I put it outside, and I allow it to walk away. See, if I am ever caught in the wrong place at the wrong time, just being alive, not bothering anyone, I hope I'm given the same kind of mercy. Thank you. How y'all feeling? Y'all still good? All right. So, uh, so this next poem, this next poem is, is, is called My Honest Poem. Um, uh, not that my other poems aren't honest, right? Uh, I got a friend, my friend's name is Richard. He doesn't like poetry, but he supports me, right? One day, he was like, Rudy, I don't understand any of your poems. And I said, you've been watching me for like four years. He says, yeah, man, I just clap when it's over. Um, and I was like, oh shit, you know? Um, so I said, I was like, what, what do you recommend that I do, right? And he said, I want you to write something that's about you and that's just really honest, right? So um, this is what I came up with. You ready for the poem? Say, let's go. Let's go. I was born on July 27th. 
That makes me a Leo. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't know what that means. Um, I'm five foot six and a half. Uh, I, I weigh 175 pounds. I don't know how to swim, and I'm a sucker for a girl with a nice smile and clean sneakers. Um, I'm still learning how to whisper. I'm often loud in places where I should be quiet. I'm often quiet in places where I should be loud. I was born feet first, and I've been backwards ever since. Um, I like ginger ale a lot. Um, I've been told that I give really bad hugs. Uh, people say that it feels like I'm trying to escape. Sometimes it's because I am. Uh, secretly, secretly I get really nervous every time someone gets close enough to hear me breathe. I have this odd fascination with things like sandcastles and ice sculptures. I assume it's because I usually find myself dedicating time to things that will only last a few moments. And I guess that's why I also tend to fall in love with women who will never love me back. I know it sounds crazy, but it's actually much easier than it seems. And to be honest, I think it's safer that way. See, relationships, they often remind me that I'm not afraid of heights or falling, but I'm scared of what's gonna happen the moment that my body hits the ground I'm clumsy. Yesterday I tripped over my self-esteem. I landed on my pride and it shattered like an iPhone with a broken face. Now I can't even tell who's trying to give me a compliment. I've never been in the military, but I have this purple heart. I got it. I got it from beating myself up over things I can't fix. I know this sounds weird, but sometimes I wonder what my bed sheets say about me when I'm not around. Uh, I wonder what the curtains would do if they found out about all the things I've done behind their backs. I've got a hamper that's overflowing with really, really loud mistakes and a graveyard in my closet. I'm afraid that if I let you see my skeletons, you'll grind my bones into powder and get high on my fault lines. Hi. Uh, my name is Rudy. Um, I enjoy frozen yogurt, people watching, and laughing for absolutely no reason at all, but I don't allow myself to cry as often as I need to. I have solar power confidence. I have a battery-operated smile. My hobbies include editing my life story, hiding behind metaphors, and trying to convince my shadow that I'm someone worth following. See, I, I don't know much, but I do know this. I know that heaven is full of music. I know that God listens to my heartbeat on his iPod. It reminds him that we still got work to do. Thank you. The next 
Mexican government confiscates approximately 30,000 illegal firearms per year. When the guns are taken, they get dismantled and the metal is used to make other types of weapons that will later be utilized by the military. In 2012, Pedro Reyes, an artist from Mexico City, convinced his government to donate the guns to him, and he turned them into musical instruments. So somewhere, there's a tambourine, a drum set, a guitar, all made out of things that were used to take people's lives, but now they create a sound that puts life back into people's bodies, which is to say a weapon will always be a weapon, but we choose how we fight the war. And from this I learned that even the most destructive instruments can still create a melody worth dancing to, and sometimes don't we also call that a battle? I wonder how long it took to convince the first rifle that it could hold a note instead of a bullet, but still fire into a crowd and make everyone move. When I was six, I was taught how to throw a punch in the 80s, that was the anti-bullying movement. Uh, the first time one of my classmates took a yo mama joke a little too far, I remembered my training, so I turned his nose into a fountain, my fist by pennies, I closed my eyes, I made a wish, I came home with bloody knuckles, and it was the first piece of artwork my family hung on the fridge. I remember staring at my hands, the same way you stare at a midterm when all your answers are correct. I didn't know what class this was, but I did know I was passing, and isn't that what masculinity has become? A bunch of dudes afraid of their own feelings, terrified of any emotion other than anger, constantly yelling at the shadows on the wall, but still having we realize that we're the ones standing in front of the light. We learn how to dodge a jab. We learn how to step in before we swing. We learn the heart is the same size as the fist, but we keep thinking they don't have the same functions. We keep telling each other to man up, but we don't know what that hell that even means. We turn our boys into bayonets. We point them in the wrong direction. We pull the triggers, and then we ignore all the damage they're doing in the distance. The word we purpose, the word we purpose, the word we purpose means to take an object and give it amnesia. It means to make something forget what it's been trained to do. Thank you. That's my time. <laughs>